Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers is 36 years old. It has an enrollment of some 4,000 associate, active, and fellow members from the electronic, mechanical, and chemical fields. And for that matter, every other branch of the physical sciences. Its members hail from near and far, USA, Canada, Brazil, England, France, Switzerland, Italy, India, China, and Brooklyn, yet. The opening day's registration is brisk and brings together a splendid turnout of society habitués. Also present are some sons of habitués. Mrs. Ethan Stifel, hostess to the ladies in attendance at the convention. We are happy indeed to welcome the wives of so many members, and we hope to be able to show them some of the traditional hospitality of New York City. For Bill Kunzman, once again, we find you our genial convention vice president. Pause for station break. Well, may I ask how the banquet tickets are selling? Lousy. At the get-together luncheon, President Peter Mole introduces the keynote speaker, Nathan Golden, a fellow of the society. It is in his new post as Director of Motion Picture Photographic Products Division of the National Production Authority that Mr. Golden comes to us today, and I know he has a message of vital importance to all of us. Mr. Golden. outset of defense mobilization, the government was faced with two definite jobs. First, to give the green light to all defense programs and to see that materials and productive capacity were made available to meet the delivery schedules. Second, to halt inflationary trends and equally important, to keep the domestic economy strong through encouraging maximum civilian production, all of this points up to one serious problem. For some considerable time in the future, it is going to be necessary for you engineers and scientists to find ways and means of using lesser amounts of critical materials and to develop substitute materials in designing the products which your companies produce. The Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers is well known for its great accomplishments in the field of standardization. It has often been stated... And Mr. Golden pointed out that the motion picture industry would be in a chaotic condition today if the Society had not obtained approval for the standards which now are recognized by the film industry throughout the world. The National Production Authority, as well as other government agents, earnestly request your close cooperation so that as a team, we can accomplish this objective, not only for the benefit of the country as a whole, but also in order that the motion picture photographic industry can protect its important position in our entire economy. I thank you. Don Alexander of Denver, Colorado, is the type of man that makes a society function. I have attended almost every convention of the society in the last 25 years to keep up with what's new and to swap ideas with my friends. Mr. Ryder, it's a pleasure to have you here from Hollywood. I'm happy to be here, boys. As past president of the society, what papers on this program are going to hold the most interest for you? Oh, I'm sure the afternoon session on magnetic recording will be of greatest interest to me and our people of Hollywood. Thank you, Mr. Ryder, very much. Welcome to the 69th convention, Dave Joy, of the National Carbon Company. We think we have a very fine lineup of papers for this convention. Which of them do you think will appeal most to you? I certainly agree that you have a lot of fine papers. I'm particularly interested in this report on Screen Brightness Committee, Theater Survey, by uh, Dr. Lozier, Chairman of the Screen Brightness Committee. I think there's going to be a lot of good food for thought there. 
Well, thank you, Mr. Joy, and I hope that report lives up to your expectations. Captain Walter Ripka, it is indeed a pleasure to have the armed services represented at this convention. Thank you, sir. Of all the items on the program, which do you think has the most interest for you? Well, they're all very good, but I'm particularly interested in the high-speed photography. You've chosen a subject that is of great value to all of us at this time, and that's the reason that the Society has arranged to have this series of papers form a symposium on high-speed photography. The man who split the atom, Bill DeVry. May I have your name, please? My name? Yes. Oh, I believe everybody here knows my name. Well, uh, what are you most interested in at this convention? Who, me? Women. Interest of the members is focused on television, its problems, and its engineering advancements. This control board is the nerve center of John Nash Ott Jr. spectacular one-time hobby, now a full-time business in his Winnetka, Illinois studio. Through stop-motion photography, he makes plant growth easily visible. At intervals, space to record the slow changes in plant life, a battery of cameras exposes single frames of motion picture film. Shutters close, an automatic floodlight center on the subject. When the single photographs are shown in rapid succession, Flowers like this iris unfold before your eyes as the rate of growth is seemingly multiplied thousands of times. A scene like this cactus bursting into bloom, lasting only a few seconds on the screen, may take months to photograph. important contribution to botanical research. And now a word from the ladies. God bless them. Ladies, ladies, ladies! Your attention, please! Uh, Charlotte Sightseeing Yacht from Skipper Frank Cahill is about to sail for a cruise around Manhattan Island. All aboard! And here we are, heading south in the historic Hudson River with the Empire State Building in the background. Ellis Island, headquarters of the United States Immigration Service. Passport to freedom. The Statue of Liberty stands guard at the threshold of America. The famous skyline view of Manhattan, the island that Peter Minuit bought from the Indians 24 bucks. A noted landmark, Brooklyn Bridge, the first bridge to span the waters of the East River. Brooklyn Navy Yard, vitally important in the defense pattern of our nation. And now we're cruising north in the East River, the celebrated home of the United Nations Secretariat. Columbia University's Baker Field, where the lion roars. The rock-bound shore of Spite and Dival, entrance to the Harlem Ship Canal. We are about to pass through the New York Central Bridge and once more enter the waters of the mighty Hudson River. The picturesque Palisade Cliffs of New Jersey. The $80 million George Washington Bridge, second longest suspension bridge in the world. New York's West Side Highway. We hope you enjoy the nautical interlude. And now, hold everything. Looks like Jack O'Brien is about to put the finger on Bill Cousman. You got any banquet tickets left, Bill, old boy? No. What do you mean, no? Gee, that ought to make you happy. You haven't a thing to worry about, have you, Bill? Not till the next convention, kid. Oh! Beijing Oscar New. Beijing Oscar New. Perhaps you'd be interested? Paging Oscar New. Somebody asking for Oscar. What is it you've got, Mr. New? What is it you've got, Mr. New? I'll tell you what I've got. I've got.
got a sure thing in the third race at Majeka. Huh? If she hits a cow on Sunday, then we'll all have peace. Take Monday, she'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Hold it, folks. Okay, thank you. You hold her hand and she holds yours, and that's a very good sign that she's your tootsie wootsie in the good old summertime. When I was elected president, I promised that the speeches would be very short and concise. Thank you very much. Music man Lester Lannan makes with the downbeat. Frank, it's been a grand convention. Yes, indeed, John. We've all had a wonderful time. Mm -hmm.